Hey, what's going on, guys? Back again with a quick 15-minute video here. Uh, sorry I couldn't make more this week. I'm a little under the weather, and I'm sorry about my voice. It's a little, little scratchy. I have a little bit of a cold today. So let's go ahead, and here's what we're going to talk about today. Um, hopefully you guys can see what's on the screen there. Uh, here's what we're going to talk about, how to differentiate a product. Product. You know, I get this a lot, and a lot of people message me on Facebook, and I talk to a lot of people, and uh, just want to discuss, you know, how to do that. How do you, how do you actually, what are you looking to do when you're looking to differentiate a product? So to make this quick, we got 15 minutes. Let's get at it, guys. So first thing, I, I made a list up here, and some of these may seem obvious. Some of these maybe not. Maybe some people just haven't thought about it. So here's kind of how I go through the process. Now, sometimes something just comes to you, you know, wow, I can make this product better. But here's kind of like a checklist we can go through. So, you know, first one, you can add more than one of the same item. Uh, one of them, I mean, you can talk about headphones, for example, right? So let's just jump to headphones, right? You're definitely going to find headphones right there. There's a pack of three, and they're a different color. So you can change the color. You can add multiple colors. You can add more than one. So if you find that nobody's doing more than one, and it could potentially be beneficial to have more than one in a pack, well, think about that. You know, think about doing more than one. Sometimes it's that simple of a differentiation. Um, a lot of times, though, especially today, it's not that simple. But that is an option for sure. Um, a lot of times, if you add more than one item, you know, you want to add maybe maybe different sizes of the items. Maybe you add one cable that's 10 feet long and another cable that's 5 foot long. But they're the same type of cable. Just for example, I mean, you're not going to sell cables more than likely, but you understand where I'm going with that. So it makes it a little different. You have to have something different, okay? So number two, improve packaging or branding. Now, the, you can talk about the box, uh, the packaging in general. Just make it look nice. Um, let's see if we can find anything. You're probably not going to find any headphones necessarily that have good packaging. But uh, sometimes they'll put their boxes and their packaging on here, um, and that kind of goes along with. Well, there you go. They have a pack. They have a package right there. So that's nothing. That's pretty basic, but still, it looks clean. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just a clean-looking package, um, and I like the bag they added. That's another thing. So really, the packaging. I mean, that could be considered part of the packaging. So you know, is their packaging good? Is your packaging going to be good on your listing? So people want to buy things that look nice. So number number two is packaging or branding, right? Um, and that could include your logo, the whole deal, right? So better pictures, okay? So these pictures, and I'm using the headphones. You wouldn't want to sell headphones, by the way. It's, it's just way too competitive. Unless you had something that was really cool you could add on to it. It would be very difficult to compete in headphones. But So anyway, yeah, so we got like different things here as far as better pictures he's got a nice lifestyle picture right he shows a guy actually using them people fail to do that you know you want to actually show somebody using it that's going to really help or at least like show some hands using it or in this case headphones show somebody's head with the headphones on i mean that's actually that's the way to go they even included a video which is really cool that can actually help differentiate you as well but yeah you know you want the clean pictures showing the product you want the packaging, which they have. And we talk about pictures. I also mentioned, like, clear white pictures. They have that, right? Clear white picture background. That's always going to essentially be your first page, right? Um, good lifestyle pictures, right here. Lifestyle picture. They're using the actual headset. Okay? And then infographics or pictures that explain the product, right? Right here, it tells you has noise cancellation, has Bluetooth, clear music, all day comfort, 30 hours of playtime. All the things you can see in a picture that you don't have to read the description. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Like I said, my voice is a little scratchy. I apologize. Um, change the color of the item. So we kind of talked about that already. Now, if I go to headphones, they got blue and black, right? They got all kinds of different colors. They have different designs as well, which we'll talk about. But there you go, that really stands out. I mean, if you were a kid and you're looking for a kid, you know, headset. So, and, you know, here we go, different colors. Pink, you got, you got turquoise, 
I mean, Jojo Siwa, anybody who has little girls knows who that is, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, look at the colors. The colors can make a pop. They can make a difference. They can make it stand out. Um, I've even gone as far as looking up, like, what colors men like the most, what colors make women want to buy, or, or just people in general. You know, red tags usually indicate, like, a sale. So there's different colors, and there's different psychologies behind that. I'd encourage you guys to look that up. Maybe it'll help you sell some product. Because ultimately how it looks is going to determine a lot of times if people ever click on your product to begin with. You won't even have a chance to sell it. Maybe it's a better product, but if you don't have better pictures or better colors or better design, you're going to be having trouble selling your product. So pictures are huge. The color can be huge. Um, these are all different, different factors you have to look at. Okay, the design change. So... I gave an example of like maybe adding a rustic wooden box or a premium clay pot to a plant um, or a special hook to a plant hanger. So it could be something very simple. So let's just go to like plant hanger. I don't know what's even going to come up. but So here we go. There's different types of hangers, right? Some might be a little easier to use. Some might hold better. You know, there's a lot of different things you can do with a design, right? So like this has a little bit more of a, of a hook. So it probably would hold if it was a little bit of wind. If it was outside, right, it would hold better versus maybe just this one. Maybe this one would be more likely to swing off or fall off. I feel like this has got a, a better hook on it. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can think of. Now, I'm not suggesting you go out and sell plants. There's so many different things. You have to look at the product, and you have to figure out what would be a better design. Um, I mean, here you go. That's very cool. That makes it stand out. They have little wood bases. On the hanger, that looks like they have some nice rope, which I think is really cool. Um, they have nice pictures, nice lifestyle pictures. It shows in somebody's house. Like, I really like that. I really like the rope. See how they have the rope there? They have the wood. You know, I wonder if this actually sells good. It's not bad, actually. There you go. You might be able to get a wood hanger, a plant shelf, or something like that that could sell decent. Um... I really like their design. You can see there's different designs here, different ropes. I mean, that looks more basic to me, but some people might think that's a more cleaner look. That's actually not a bad look there. So think about that. Think about the design itself. Think about the, the rope that's used. Think about the, the actual plant pot or the packaging. In this case, you're not going to have packaging. But So design change. There's so many things you can go through in the design change. That's number five. Number six. And the one I love to use myself is to bundle. So bundling, you can add one or more complementary items. So, uh, for example, um, we used the fuse beads we were talking about um, in the previous video. But, you know, you can really bundle anything. I mean, you want to try to bundle complementary products, right? Um, so, for example, we talked about this fuse bead kit. They had the fuse beads, so what did they include in their bundle? What would be beneficial, right? So there's so many different things. I mean, the one I talked about had a book that could show you how to do a design. Um, they clearly they included a case. That's a complimentary item, so you don't lose all your beads, right? You kind of have to have that. You need the tools, right? You need the tools to actually do it. So you need the book. That's the design. You need the, the cases to hold all the beads. You could do a different number of beads, right? So you can do a different number. Um... You know, you can do different colors that another package might not have. So, and then, of course, the tools to do it. And they include these little keychains. So you can make your keychains and connect a little rope to your, to the keychain you made. So there's all kinds of different ways to bundle. You want to try to bundle complementary items, right? So let's make this quick because I'm running out of time here. Um, improved function. So my example was like an electronic device with a longer battery. Or a screwdriver that holds a screw on top of the magnetic, magnetically, for example. So anything that's going to improve the product, that's going to make it solve a problem, going to make it more functional for the user, that's improved function. You want to make sure you do that. Now, yes, these all kind of go together in some respects. But just think about that when you're doing a product. These are some of the things and some of the checklists you want to go through when you're doing that. So here's we'll cover this quickly. How do I find that information out? Look at the reviews. Huge one. Look at the reviews. What do people like about the product? What do people dislike? Come right over here. Click on the ratings. Go through the reviews. 
the bees are so small, they say. Oh my goodness, these bees are tiny. You know, make sure, excited to try them out. I wish they had larger sizes. Or I have a lot of larger sizes, which is what I'm, what I'm used to. We'll see how this goes. So they're saying the bees are small. They're used to bigger sizes. So right there, what does that tell you? Maybe you should think about having bigger size beads. I didn't even know there was different size beads. That's why it's important to review, to read the reviews, to see what the customers are saying. How can you solve a problem? Maybe it's as simple as creating bigger beads. Maybe that's what customers want. You won't know until you read the reviews, right? And I didn't know that until I just read that review. Ask the supplier what they think will go well with the product. This is something I've done just on a recent product I've launched. I'll show you real quick. Um, and again, guys, this is not the brag or anything like that. I'm just showing you my numbers. I just launched a product. Um, here's my numbers. I don't know if you guys can read that. It's it's like three hundred and thirty nine sale three hundred and thirty nine dollars in sales and fourteen items sold. That's a combination of a couple of products, but the main one I just launched. It's not a real big margin right now because I'm trying to gain rank. But I sold eleven yesterday. I'm on pace to probably sell about a little bit more, about the same today. Um, how did I do that product? I asked the supplier. I said, "What do you think would go well with this? What do you what would you use? How could you complement this?" And she came up and gave me an item that. I didn't really see many, if any, had that complemented the item that I was selling. So think about that. Ask your supplier. They know a lot about the products. Um, does your supplier have a better photo photographer? And this is kind of how to get these better photos, right? So also on that same product I'm just I just mentioned, the supplier had unbelievable uh, uh, photographer that did an unbelievable job on the photos. I mean, they are top notch professional pictures. Better than I could have ever done. And I would have paid $300. That saved me $300. So ask your supplier, do they have a photographer on staff? Can, they, can you provide professional pictures? If you can, then I'll go with you, right? So that gives them incentive. It gets them business. They're happy. You're happy. you got great pictures, right? So can your supplier offer custom colors differentiation? Simply ask or provide pictures of what you would like or even a handwritten design if that's what it takes. Or a handwritten color. Or I want something like this. Come up with example pictures send it to them, go to Google, find the pictures that you like, send it to them and tell them this is what I want. Obviously, don't break any patents or trademarks. I'm not suggesting that. I'm suggesting get them an example so they can see what it is you want. Unless you're great at drawing it yourself, go for it, right? Okay, so does Alibaba offer any suppliers offer improved or newer model? And this is kind of what I talked about with improved function. Um, can they give you a better model with a better battery or a better... I don't know, a better heater or something that can blow hot air faster or more air. Whatever you're looking for, can they do it better? Okay, ask your supplier. Ask your friends, your coworkers, your family, what would they like to see with your product? Um, I did this with my product before this, which was very successful, and it still is. And I asked, what would you want to see in that? And I asked people that, if possible, that were related to what my product is. So ask them, what would you want to see in that product? What would make you want to buy this? And what kind of price would you be willing to pay? Use people you know as kind of like your, your uh, what do they call that? I, I can't think of it. I'm not thinking straight. But what do they call that when you actually can get a list of people that can give you information? Like they do um, surveys and such. Use, your, use the people around you to find out what they like. Typically, people will like the same type of stuff. Ask as many people as you know. You're gonna get a, you're gonna get answers. Trust me. Um, join groups on Facebook. This is kind of a neat trick I've done, or in person related to your product, and ask them what they would buy or your differentiation. Especially after you think you have a great differentiation, you don't have maybe friends or coworkers or, or family to talk to, or you've already asked them. Go on these groups and ask them. Would you like this? Does this look nice? Would you guys buy this? It's a good way to do it. Uh, just so many different groups on Facebook, right? Um, and another one, of course, is order samples from your competitors. Make sure they work. Make sure they're functional. And then make sure you order samples from your supplier. You've got to check these out because you want to make sure they're quality. You have to make sure the product's quality if you're going to differentiate it properly. Make sure it's quality quality items via your supplier as well as via your competitors. It's going to cost you some money, yes, but you need to have that information so you can make an informed decision on how to best differentiate it and bundle your items if you're going to do that and create or create a better item with any of these recommendations. 
So guys, just about out of time here. I'm going to go ahead and finish this off. Ultimately, did you solve a problem? Did you make it better? Why would a customer buy mine over theirs? Especially if it's the same and you're trying to launch the same thing and they have 50, 100 reviews. Why are they going to buy yours instead of theirs? They're not going to. Unless you're like two sellers on the market and they run out of stock or something. Why would they buy yours if yours is the same? You have to make it different using something like we talked about here. If you guys have any suggestions, and again, please like and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. I have some things coming down the pipe. I'm thinking about doing a list, and I'm thinking about doing some, maybe some personal coaching. Um, maybe, you know, take on just like 10 students and, uh, you know, walk them through. So I'm already helping some people on Facebook. I want to get more in-depth with that, guys. So I'll keep you updated on that. In the meantime, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, and again, if you can't answer the question, what I just talked about, did you solve this problem? Did you make it better? Why would a customer buy mine over theirs? You know, go back to the drawing board, figure out a better differentiation or figure out a different product because that one's just not going to sell if you can't make yours different and if you can't bundle. All right, guys. Peace out. Thank you so much. Have a great night. God bless.